Uh, what cookbook do you wish you had written? Okay, um, David Thompson Thai food because it was a, a groundbreaker. Michelle Hazan's um, seminal work on Italian cooking because again it's a book that, that does name. It's wonderful and it's inclusive. Maybe something by Pellegrini, Pellegrini Tutsi, or maybe um, Nebrat Savan's great book. Maybe my my great 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 fifth cousin of moved or whatever. That book, Avi Kerwin, who was um, on my mother's side of the family, who in 1864 wrote a book called Hosting Guest. And with, with this third book, it's the 150th anniversary of the publication of Hosting Guest. And so that, that's, that's underpinning some of the, the thinking behind the new book. Um, that, that it's a book that's about entertaining, it's written by a, by a gentleman cook rather than by a chef. Um, and it's, and, it, and it's, it's fascinating looking back at the sort of the ideas that he had um, on cooking, you know. Great stuff about how you never buy a bird from a coop, you always buy it from a free range. Yeah. You know, that you roast your coffee fresh every day if you were mm. I mean, stuff that it's so super kind of, you know, if we were down at, if we were down at Coffee and Truth, they would, they would nod their head sagely and you go, well, if that advice comes from 150 years ago and a, a lawyer from the Middle Temple in London. Um, so I, so that, that, that would be good. Nigella's, Nigella's um, Domestic Goddess is a wonderful book. I mean, there's so many, and there's so many, and that, that's really just the stuff that is um, kind of recipe driven. There's also, you know, the works of MJK Fisher, who's a beautiful food writer, and a very evocative food writer. The David is an amazing writer. I mean, there's, there, there's, there's such a wonderful kind of library of great writers to, to read um, out there. And, and I, I, my, my house is, um, my house is thick. Good books, maybe 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000. Oh, wow. And also, and also old books. I've got family recipe books that's dating back to 1765, handwritten recipe books, right? Really, oh. 1765, which featured in that first book. Um, there's a macaroni and cheese recipe in there. And I oh, love that idea. That, I've tried that, it's yeah, amazing. That's crazy, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> that's like, how bizarre is that? That's the same recipe, and they just put macaroni with a Y at the end. So I love that, and I think part of the, part of the theme with the new book, with cookbook, is that it's, you know, that, that we always think about people when they write cookbooks are always trying to say they're doing something new, but often often the biggest advances in food are, are stepping back to, you know, and Michael Pollan is a great example of that, you know, eat things your grandmother would recognise as food, which is a beautiful bit of advice. You know, move away from the process, move back to the real and the simple, the classic, and the great produce. Um, I'm messed up. <laughs> Um, what local food or ingredients have you enjoyed on your trip to South Africa? I've tried some excellent hard cheeses um, here, and um, I, artisan cheese making is something I'm very interested in because it's, a, it's an emerging thing in Australia. I think probably we started about 30 years ago here at Bill Southern Garden Cheese, maybe 20, and there's some really interesting hard cheese coming through here. Um, the meat in South Africa, as I've seen, has been amazing, whether it's Dorper lamb or whether it's um, some of the beef that I've seen, even some of the more you know, kind of game-driven meats, uh, the ostrich, beautiful. Um, in terms of in terms of other things, I'm a you know I'm kind of interested in the whole chutney. The world of chutney here is fascinating. Um, I'm less so interested in um, in the occasional smiley. Not something I probably would try again. You like to try everything once, but smiley yeah. probably wouldn't be high on my list of coming back to. But I had a Gatsby today, and that oh, was really? fascinating. Oh, really? Oh, enjoyed And that was interesting. And then a Prego roll, which is brilliant. And a Prego roll will undoubtedly be in my next book in 2015. I think that's a, that's a cracker. And wherever I go, I, I look for inspiration for, for new things for the book. For, for the book. And like this, this book, cookbook has got a couple of recipes, and three recipes inspired by some time spent in Botswana, which is... You know, which is great. Like peanut butter on, you know, on your breakfast porridge. How delicious is that? I mean, you know, do a little sugar, cold milk. Oh, you know, wrap, wrap around a bit, a bit of Australian bush or a bit, a bit of a bit of, you know, a bit of South African veld, and it's, you know, it's perfect either way. Um, you know, we probably use we probably use an oats, and you you use you papa some for, which is you know, papa so, which is yeah. beautiful. You know, so that, that, that's kind of that's kind of exciting. And I do love, you know, I love that way that when you come to a country you see 
differently. So I had a conversation with a, uh, a jam maker, an African jam maker in um, Soto Markets, about 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 instant cheats ice cream, and she had a recipe that was exactly the same as my my wife's grandmother's recipe for condensed milk ice cream. So I love this idea that you know, on different sides of the world, country country women have been making. You know, the same ice cream yeah. in the same way. So it's a very strange idea, but I love it. I love okay. It.